Welcome everyone to our Sunday school. We're getting ready to get started. We have a special part. Mother McCoy is going to give us an overview of this unit. Mother McCoy is going to give us an overview of um, our new unit that we're starting, and we're trying to do this by audio, so if you're on the stream and you can hear clearly, just uh, send a thumb up, thumb up or something, let me know you can hear it clearly. Today's lesson is lesson number seven of July 19. Israel demands a king. Mother McCoy will be joining us momentarily. to our Academy of Excellence, commonly known as Sunday School. We are grateful to God for the merger today of the Greater Refuge of Morris Church in Orlando, Florida, and the Straightway Church of Christ in Connecticut. Straightway pastored by Bishop M. Will McCoy, Sr., and the Greater Refuge of Morris Church pastored by Elder Marcus R. McCoy, Jr. Our Academy of Excellence Superintendent for Greater Refuge Memorial will take us further at this time. Let's receive the Lucy McCoy Senior. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all the time, God is good. <laughs> Lesson 7, July 19, 2020. Israel demands a king. Israel demands a king. Today, on July 19th, we are starting Unit 2 under Saul, a flawed king. Unit 2. And there's only three Sundays in this unit. And we're going to ask that our apostolic mother come and give us a unit overview before going into today's lesson with Bishop McCoy, um, Israel, the man of the king. Um, Mother McCoy, would you come with the overview for this unit? Thank you, Deacon Luke. Unit 2, a flawed, F-L-A-W-E-D, king. You've been muted to unmute yourself. Press the star key twice. F-L-A-W, that means he was not a perfect king. This quarter, we have been studying passages from three historical books of the Bible. Judges and First and Second Samuel, telling us what happened in the early days of the nation of Israel after they entered the promised land. While the people thought a king would solve their problems, this introduced new problems. Even today, many folks think government can meet our greatest needs, but it cannot. Only the Lord can do that. Like the people of this period of biblical history, we need to learn to trust in God alone. As the superintendent has stated, there are only three lessons in this quarter coming from 1 Samuel chapters 8, 9, 10, and 13. Please study these chapters. And Saul, a flawed he is called a Floyd king. Israel demands a king. If God is our leader, do we need a king? 
tall anointed king with a comes great responsibility. Total disappointment under pressure. The decision of the leaders cannot be done under this influence. Today's lesson, July the 19th, lesson 7, Israel demanded king. It's coming from 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 11, and then skip down to verses 18 to 20. This lesson will show people turning to governing leaders to rule over them, that God is the supreme ruler that men must ultimately submit to. So for today's lesson, I need you to turn to 1 Samuel, the 8th chapter, and it'll be verses 1 through 11, and then verses 18, 19, and 20. Next Sunday, July the 16th, lesson 8, God anointed king. That will be coming from 1 Samuel, the 9th chapter, verses 25, 26, 27, and then chapter 10, verse 1. So you need to study for next Sunday at least chapter 9 and 10. This lesson will discuss the anointing of King Saul. We will see that following the Lord means relying on the Holy Spirit to guide and power and equip us to do what he has called us to do. The final lesson in this unit, unit 2, will be August the 2nd. Saul's disappointment, disobedience of the flesh pressure, and that will be coming from the 13th chapter. As we complete our study this month, it is essential that we remember to be chosen by God for leadership and an honored but heavy responsibility. And for DRM members, the Sunday School books are now at the church. Uh, so if there's any way you can get to the church, you'll be able to pick up a book. But in the meantime, next week, let us study chapters 9 and 10 of First Samuel. Thank you. Shalom, shalom. Amen. Praise the Lord. And thank you, Mother McCoy, for that wonderful unit introduction and overview. Again, we're in lesson number 7 for July 19th. 2020 have it had not been for a man the COVID-19 outbreak we would be in our holy convocation and for the last few years I have been privileged to be assigned to teach the bishops so in that we have a man the tradition of teaching Sunday school we're going to continue that tradition on today Israel demands a king. Our lesson text is 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 through 11 and verse 18 to 20. Related scriptures are 1 Samuel 8, 1 to 22, Deuteronomy 17, 14 to 20, Judges 8, 22 to 23, Hosea 13, 4 through 11. The time is 1043 BC. The place is Ramah, our golden text. 1 Samuel 8 and 7, let's read together. The Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. All right. We're thankful to God for this. This is our summer quarter. In this quarter, we've been talking about kings and leaders. Everybody say kings and leaders. Amen. It's important in understanding where we are in unit number two, before we get to uh, understanding a flawed king, we got to realize that God had used a system of leadership through judges. And in the previous unit, we talked about Ehud, we talked about Gideon, we talked about Samson. If you remember, Samson's life is for five chapters in the book of Judges. And so we ended up uh, on last week still in the period of the Judges, but we were introduced to uh, this figure called 
Samuel. And in unit number two, we're going to see that God still has a plan for his leadership, and he's using the weakness of men. I want y'all to understand this. He uses the weakness of men in order to show his strength. Why? Because his grace is sufficient. All right? As we jump right into today's lesson, we need to know about introduction. Today's world has many forms of government, a monarchy, democracy, dictatorship, oligarchy, and a republic, just to name a few. As far as the ancient world is concerned, there's the very idea of a democratic government was rare. Most nations were ruled by a single person, a king or queen, who was mostly an absolute ruler and answerable to no one. In short, the ruler made all the rules. There are still kingdoms in the world, but most of them are constitutional monarchies. Just say with me, constitutional monarchies. Uh -huh. Meaning that a ruler cannot exercise power despotically. In other words, you just can't do whatever you want to do. Moreover, just because a government calls itself democratic does not mean that it is. Many so-called so democracies are actually republics, uh, uh, and republics are actually dictatorships. From the beginning, Israel was to be a theocracy. Everybody say theocracy. And a nation ruled by God and governed by the commandments he gave on Mount Sinai. Although God knew Israel would ask for a king, they were still supposed to be governed by God and his word. How many realize God does not care really about the form of government? He's really concerned about who's doing the governing. Amen. Our lesson is outlined in four points. Repeat after me. Reprehensible judges. Uh, the second point, request for a king. The third point, response from the Lord. And the final point, refusal of the people. All right, let's get right into our lesson text. I'm going to read verse 1, you read 2. We should alternate until we get to verse 11. Then we'll drop down to verse 18, continue to alternate, and complete with verse 20 all together. 1 Samuel 8 and verse number 1. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Class. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. Class. Verse number five, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Class. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Verse 8, class. Now, therefore, hearken unto their voice. Howbeit, yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Class. Verse number 11, he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over thee. He will take your sons, and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots. Let's drop down to verse 18, class. Mm -hmm. 
Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, nay, but we will have a king over us. And verse number 20 altogether, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. As we look at the lesson exposition, amen, reprehensible judges. That's the first, amen, outline point, reprehensible judges. Let's talk about Samuel's son. I want you to know we're not in the book of Judges. We are still in the period of the Judges. Can anybody think about some female judges that were indicated in our previous studies? All right, if you're on the conference line or you in the, the feed, amen, you, you can respond. Any female judge? I know I got a Deborah listening somewhere. All right, thank you so much. Y'all remember Deborah. All right, in the period of Samuel, when we started studying, which is we're still talking about judges, who is Samuel's mother? Hannah, thank you, Elder Williams. Y'all remember Hannah? So I want you to highlight this. We're talking about Israel demands a king, but I want you to know women are very uh, influential in the kings being in position, one, and then being in proper order with God. So we're going to talk about sons, Samuel's sons. In uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse number 1 and verse number 2. All right, let's read. That he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of the firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abiah, and they were judges in Beersheba. Everybody say Beersheba. It's important for you to understand where Beersheba is. You may recall that Samuel's mentor, mentor Eli, failed to restrain his sons, and they suffered God's judgment because of their sins. Y'all remember how the Ark of the Lord covenant was stolen because Eli had allowed his sons to do some of the same things that we see Samuel's sons doing. And you remember Sister uh, Phineas, after they told her that the ark was gone, her, her, her father-in-law was dead, her husband was dead, but be happy you got a male child. Phineas' wife said, hey amen, I'm going to name him Ichabod. Why am I saying this? Because you need to realize, even though they are the people of God, the glory is gone. How many realize if you're going to be the people of God, you got to stay with the glory? Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So Samuel did not have a good role model as he was being raised by Eli in the temple. If you following somebody that don't have no glory, like I couldn't see my mother today. It might have been hard to hear through the uh, phone and going through the computer but I could feel the glory of God. Anybody thank God for the glory this morning? I'm talking about Israel demanding the king, but God wants you to request for the glory. Just ask God on this convocation Sunday, just say, Lord, send your glory. Lord, send, send your glory. At this point in the narrative, Samuel was old. Although we are not sure how old, but the Bible said he was old. Perhaps feeling that he did not have a lot of time left, he decided to appoint his sons as judges. Whether he was thinking clearly because of his advanced age, was not thinking clearly because of his advanced age, or simply could not see what his own sons was like is conjecture. No, we don't know why he did it. Amen. But we do know he was old, one. Two, we do know that he was born into a situation that the presence of God was not there. We do know he was raised by Eli, and Eli's sons was doing the same thing that he let his sons do. How many realize we all been born in sin and shapen in iniquity? But I'm trying to tell you, you might be born in the project, but the project wasn't born in you. And there's no excuse to blame the project for the position you are in God. All you have to do is say, thank God that I don't look like 
what I've been through. How many realize your life is not a project, but it's actually a promise? I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am what God has ordained me to be. Either way, he made a mistake by giving them positions of judicial power. Remember, we're in the period of the judges. We're not in the book of judges. But they still have judgment authority. Just because a person has great ability or has lived a godly life does not mean his own children will follow in his footsteps. Since, everybody say Beersheba, was the southernmost city in Israel. It is even, it has been even suggested that Samuel placed them in this faraway place because he knew of their evil proclivity. And this location kept them far from most of the Israelites. We know, however, that simply sending to someone to another city does not change who the person is. Oh, I want to go back. That's why I thank God for my mother. Amen. She taught me that don't look down on that young girl because she got knocked up, if you will, or pregnant. And everybody trying to ostracize her said in her day when they got pregnant, they just moved the girl to another city, live with a family member somewhere else. Amen. And tried to hide it. But how many realize sin ain't nothing but sin? I'm talking about when your system of governance is established by representable, reprehensible judges, the glory of the Lord can't come back. Oh, America, the glory has departed from the temple. And God is using this season so that you can ask him for the glory. Do you believe God will use man's weakness, weak leadership, man's weakness, weak judgment, so that you will quit looking to man, demanding for another man, because all of our hope shouldn't be in man, but somebody say, Lord, send your glory. We go into sinful service. Verse number three, let's read. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes and perverted judgment. We've already heard the statement, money talks. Sadly, this is true in many situations, even in the legal system. To this day, there are people in power who can be bought. In some parts of the world, this is very common. The sons of Samuel turned aside after Luca, meaning they took money to make judgments in favor of the highest bidder. They knew what was right, but perverted judgment or justice for their own benefit. In this regard, they were unlike Samuel, who was a good and godly man. They walked not in his ways, indicates that Samuel had set the right example for them, but they chose a different path. They were in clear violation of the Mosaic law. Everybody understand that they were reprehensible, amen, judges. They chose to do wrong. I want y'all to understand, amen, there was social injustice. There was legal injustice. There was biblical and religious injustice. But God still gave them an access. If you rely on God and don't put your trust in man, it doesn't matter what situation is on the outside. That's why I can't be a partner in certain types of social activism because the government that you are requesting is a man-led government. Now, if you want me to fight for my civil rights, realize that I'm fighting for a theocracy where God is the ultimate amen judge. And God has said some things that I got to live by, whether you like me or not. Israel's problem is they started, started to demanding a king, and this king had a system of rulership that was contrary to the will of God. Now let's go to our second point, request for a king. 1 Samuel 8, 4 to 6. Elders are deliberate. Verse number 4 and 5, let's read. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel at Ramah. Verse 5. 
and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in our ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. The actions of Samuel's sons led to widespread discontent. Unbeknownst to Samuel, the elders, the tribal leaders of Israel got together and decided that they had had enough and wanted something to be done about the situation. The elders of Israel were in unanimous agreement and their goal was clear. Rama, everybody say Rama, was Samuel's base of operation. Although he traveled on a circuit, judging Israel throughout his life. Amen. He was also recognized as a prophet, being both a political and a spiritual leader. He was the de facto leader of Israel, except in regard to his own sons. And I want you to know, amen, de facto is acknowledged that God was the king. He had a home. But he would rotate around primarily between three places, Bethel, Gilgal, and Mitzvah. But he knew his sons were so wicked. Missionary, you better quit hiding, amen, your child, trying to, amen, save yourself from embarrassment. You know that girl was hot from the day she got here, amen, because you looked in her eyes and you saw something that reminded you of yourself. Before you were delivered. Come on, y'all talk to me on today. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor, you better quit trying to, amen, uh, cover over the Casanova behavior of that little boy. You see it in his eyes. And you know that's you before you were delivered. But instead of dealing with it, instead of putting the mic down and picking up your son and guiding him, you just kept going around to your ministry circuit. You kept going around, and then you're going to take him out of Rama, where all of the people are, and put him on the outskirts. You're going to send him to the country. You're going to send him to the boys' club. You're going to send him out there in the woods. That was what Beersheba represented. It was the southernmost part. It was at the end of the territory. But wrong in the country, it wrong in the city. That's how the drug got in a lot of country areas. You sent that New York City slipper that had a heroin problem down to the country and didn't deal with his addiction because if he can't live safe in the city, he surely ain't going to live safe in the country. Amen. And so Israel demands a king. Y'all with me on today? Somebody tell the Lord, thank you, Jesus. The elders pointed out two ir irrefutable facts to Samuel. He was old. And his sons were evil. All oh, them two things right there should resonate in your mind. Anytime when the, the leader is justified, amen, it's all right, and you know it's all wrong, your time has passed, and you're still holding on, amen, you refuse to pass the baton, and then you're going to use scripture to justify dying and being in the casket with the baton in your hand. I want to reference you to 1 Samuel chapter number 8, verses 4 and verse number 5. Amen. The elders brought up two points. I hope you all understand what I'm saying. He old and your sons are evil. Now, being old is not the problem. The problem was that you don't allow nepotism to drive your decision. If you read those verses, you'll find out. That God didn't tell Samuel to appoint his sons as his successors, nor did he inquire of God. A good idea is not necessarily a God idea. You need to look at, amen, your neighbor across the social distance and just say, every good idea is not a God idea. Uh -huh. Although none of us like to admit it, age not only robs us of our physical prowess, but it may also affect our ability to make good decisions. To what degree Samuel's age affected his judicial ability is unknown. Perhaps the elders just figured the time had arrived for Samuel to retire. I'm trying to tell you, they didn't say nothing wrong. He was old and his boys was evil. 
The problem was not in what they said. The problem is in what they continue to say. How many know we got to stay with the word of God? Somebody say stay with the word and you'll be all right. All right, we're moving on here. Had a little glitch, but we're going to get there. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. All right, moving right along. So these deliberate elders wanted Samuel to know we got a problem with your sons. And the problem that we got with your sons is that you have allowed them, amen, to do things and you should retire. See, the larger issue of Samuel's son, since Samuel had a great deal of influence in Israel, the elders foresaw, foresaw, foresaw disastrous consequences. If Samuel's sons were given complete Unchecked national power. Anytime a leader wants you to have no check and balances, that ain't God's leadership, y'all. Somebody say, help us, God. The leaders concluded that the easiest way to solve the problem was to institute a monarchy. After all, this was typical of virtually all the nations, particularly those in which, which the Israelites were familiar. Now, I want y'all to realize that this is not in the book of Judges, but I've said it three times. It's still the what? Period of the Judges. And in the period of the Judges, every man did what was right in his own eyes. This is the period where they got God, but they don't have no glory. So how many realize you can have God, but don't have his glory? Hey, Amen. You can have a knowledge of God. You can have an understanding of the Scriptures, but having information knowing facts is not God's glory as a matter of fact you don't have to know everything all you got to do is let the glory of the Lord operate in your life and God will give you what you need to know on a need to know basis I would I'd rather deal with somebody that's operating in the glory than somebody that know all of the books of the Bible somebody say to God be the glory so when Israel's elders a man stood up Samuel is now displeased. Verse number six, let's read. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel did what? Now, he didn't pray when he asked him for his son. I mean, when he placed his son in the position. But now that he has opposition, he goes to the Lord. But rather than acquiescing to the desires of Israel's leaders, Samuel was, and everybody say, displeased. Literally, their request was evil in his eyes. Now, he could see the wrong of the elders, but couldn't see the wrong of his own boy. Y'all know he was old and needed to retire. He still was anointed. He still was God's man. But the glory had departed from the temple. And we need somebody who's just not a good leader. We need a godly leader. We need somebody that can bring the glory. Somebody thank God for the glory today. That's what separates a man from just uh, any other Christian organization and holy convocation. Holy convocation is not a political agenda. Yeah, we vote. Yeah, there are human politics that go. But anybody that knows about holy convocation, when you get there, there's a glory that only the Holy Ghost can explain. You, you, the, 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 the maids didn't clean up your room in time. You had to pay for parking. The usher, amen, wouldn't let you in to the, the noonday service because you forgot your badge. If you get caught up in politics and people's weaknesses, if you get caught up in all of the things that God allow and forget that you're not there to have a, a well-made-up bed, you, you're not there to buy the new, you went and bought that fashion and the vendor told you, say, I just got one of these. And you had the holy convocation. And then the moment you came downstairs, fashionably late, amen, because you wanted everybody to see what they had saw out there, you looked over and two other women sitting over there got on the same thing that you had. And so now, instead of hearing the word of God, amen, all you talking about, she told, she's there for business. She's marketing. They're going to tell you what you want to hear that don't nobody have, amen, what you got. But it doesn't matter if we all bought our clothes from J.C. Penney. If you went to Target and I went to Target and we came out with the same thing. 
It's not what we got on the outside. Y'all don't hit me on today. But it's what we got on the inside. How many know you got a unique praise? Anybody know that you got something on the inside that don't nobody else have? Amen. Somebody give God some glory today right now. Amen. So the request, I mean, excuse me, response from the Lord. Amen. Verses 7 through verse number 11. I'm going to start with verse 7. You read 8, we'll, amen, close out with verse 11 together. Y'all praying with me? Amen. Response from the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Class, verse 8. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that, that shall reign over them. Class. All right, verse number 11 all together. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for yourself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. Y'all still with me? To his credit, Samuel took all this to the Lord, which is precisely what he sh we should do when we find ourselves in a similar situation. How many realize he should have took it to the Lord first? Now, before I go a little further, this is where me and Union Gospel Press have a little separation in the way we teach this lesson. Amen. I want you to know God is responding. And God is saying to Samuel, well, son, just like your sons belong to you, these people belong to me. And in that the people didn't come to me, they went to Samuel. But they came to you, and you're supposed to be representing me. Give them what they want. God will add, bless you with what you ask for even if it's against his perfect will. Yeah. Why? Because you're not operating in his glory. Mm -hmm. You operate in his goodness. And in that you operate in his goodness, all you know that this is bad. Mm -hmm. Everything that's bad does not mean that God can't bring goodness out of it. How many realize the devil meant it for evil? Yeah, yeah but God turned it around. God will use weakness. He'll have them lie on you. He'll have them mistreat you. He'll have them steal from you just to see if you want the glory or you want the goods. I'd rather go mistreated and operate in the miracle power of God than to have my goods and don't have no glory. So God, to a man Samuel's credit, the lesson says here, he did what the Lord told him to do. Well, what did the Lord tell him to do? Give them what they want. But then tell them what they want is going to do for them. In other words, he validates Samuel. Even though they wanted a king like everybody else, God is telling them, we gonna, I'm going to give you a king, and it's going to be like everybody else in one way, but it's gonna, not going to be like everybody else in another way. I'm going to use another man's weakness. Now I'm going ahead a little bit. Y'all know when they looked at Saul, Saul did the exact thing that the scripture had told them that they were going to do. Amen. In other words, everybody who's looking around at you, they look like they got their convocation face on. Amen. They look like they all ready to serve, but everybody ain't, ain't ready to give God the glory. Amen. Look over at your neighbor and say, are you ready to give God some glory? In other words, God's glory is what's going to be manifested. Somebody say rejection of God. All right, if Samuel was hoping the Lord was going to intervene and possibly change the mind of Israel's leader, he was greatly disappointed. The Lord, in fact, took Samuel to hearken, told Samuel to hearken, that is, listen to the people and grant their request. I, I, I hope somebody could get this. In other words, God will use somebody else's weakness to show you how weak you really are. 
You're doing all that circuit preaching, going around, ignoring your sons. So God got to have the folk do something. And then all of a sudden you're going to run to God and ask God to take the people to the woodshed. And he said, no, I got a problem with you. That's a, amen. See, can't nobody make you mad. You get mad. Oh, come on and say hallelujah. Can't nobody put you out. You leave. Can't nobody take, not if you operating in the glory. How many realize if you operate in the glory, they can want you to be out. They can do everything that they, they try, but no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. There's some folk right now want your husband. There's some folk right now want your wife. There's some folk that want your job. They want your car. They want your house, but they can't have it. Come on and say hallelujah. Amen. But mess around and step out of the glory. M mess around and get in and do what you want in your own eye. Mess around and just start operating in your own will. And somebody else will be wearing that ring he bought for you. Amen. And you'll be all upset. Amen. Trying to cause God will allow you to show, find the weakness of your own self. Put your hands on your chest and say, Lord, heal my heart. Yeah, somebody tell him, thank you, Jesus. God understood what was going on. Apparently, Samuel assumed that Israel's request was a personal rejection of him and his leadership. Hey, Amen. Just go on and tilt your head. Look at somebody say, it's not all about you. It's not all. Rather than it was a rejection of God as their king, it was a repudiation of his laws given to gov govern this nation. Let's talk about a little review of history. Amen. Verse number eight, as the Lord spoke to Samuel, he reminded him of the things that had not changed in hundreds of years. After being delivered from Egyptian bondage, Israel should have been so grateful that their devotion and dedication to the Lord would have been evident, but it was not. Instead, they forsook the Lord and worshiped other gods. This was their besetting sin. Whenever you in the church and looking outside of the church, for your happiness, you want somebody else to be king over you and not the king of kings and the Lord of lords. How many realize this joy that we have? Can y'all finish that? The world didn't give it to us. And the world can't what? I hope you're telling the truth today. Come on and say hallelujah. Because God will show try you the way your joy is. Is your joy in a paycheck? Is your joy in a nice whip? Is your joy in a good man? Is your joy in a good home? Or is in your joy in the Lord? Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So the strength that we have to endure is when you wake up and say, God, I thank you for this joy. How many of this is the day the Lord have made? And we are to what? Read joy. Amen. That means God already gave you joy. Just be there and think on that joy. Amen. Since this was, this was the way things were, Samuel was to listen to the people and grant them their request. Now let's talk about a realistic forecast. I talked about what's in the history. Now let's talk about what's in your future. Amen. Although the Lord was going to permit Israel to have a king, somebody say permissive will, he wanted them to know what they were really getting into. The Lord told Samuel to protest solemnly unto them. This God is so good. You allow your sons to do what you didn't want these people to do, but now God said, make it hard on them. Tell them what, everything. Amen. Because God know you ain't used to telling people about their wrongdoing. Come on and say hallelujah. Amen. You know, if you, if you were letting your sons get by, I imagine it was a whole bunch of other folk you let get by. Amen. But now God is saying, you're old, you done done a good job going to church, running around here. But the condition that Israel is in is largely because you haven't protested solemnly. Amen. This meant he was to warn them of the consequences of their decision. If you in a church, if you in a ministry, if you are following a leader who does not stand on his watch and not warning you of the impending judgment to come, I want you to know that is not God's man. God's men and women, they standing up telling you this is the end. God's men and women are telling you that you better get your life right. God's men and women are telling you you don't have no time to worry about nothing. How many realize our hope is not in the presidency? You think that November 3rd 
uh, November 8th, uh, whenever your primary gonna come, is the solution to your problem. You think that a new president gonna change the direction. No, America, we need God. We need to go back to where God is getting the glory in everything that we do and say. And this polar prophet from right here at 601 Second Street in Gainesville, Florida, in Alachua County, amen, while I'm practicing physical distance, I'm telling you to repent. You need to change your ways. Hey Amen. This is a realistic for forecast. Now, after I done told the world to repent, I'm talking to the church. Everybody who under the sign of my voice. Hey Amen. If my people, which are called by my name, will just what? Humble themselves. And, hey Amen. Some of y'all too high. You, you, you're just too exalted. You got to come down. You got to let God get the glory. Too much of the glory, amen, is on you. Glory on your head, glory on your feet, glory on your fingers. You just got glory all around you, amen. But any time, any inconvenience come, all you do is get compl stop complaining and let the glory of the Lord lead you. Amen. He wanted them to know what they were getting into. The Lord told Samuel to protest solemnly. Amen. This meant he was to warn them of the consequences of their decision. I'm telling you right now, I'm trying to move. If you don't make the right choice, you're going to suffer under the consequence. The people were like children who wanted a puppet and can see only the fun that they'll have and not the unpleasant task, amen, of pet ownership. In the words of my daddy, the late Bishop Rule Bartholomew McCoy, Amen. If you play with a puppy, he'll lick you in the mouth. Amen. Samuel dutifully shared all that the Lord told him. Amen. Some folk don't mind the puppy licking them in the mouth. Amen. Concerning their request for a king and what it would mean for them. Some folk already told me the dog's mouth is cleaner than your mouth. As with many decisions and choices, there's usually the good and the bad. And the ugly. Amen. Before making important decision, it behooves us to weigh the pros and the cons. You believe a puppy licking you in the mouth, amen, is somehow uh, helping you? I want you to know you don't know the order of God's creation. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Amen. A puppy doesn't have the same value in the kingdom. I'm talking about God's governance. Amen. As a human, you more fighting for puppy rights, for dog rights. Amen. For the rights of things on the out, for the trees. Amen. For everything else. And you trampling on the rights of those that God say, by this shall all men know that ye are my. Oh, you thought I was talking about Peter. No, I'm talking about you who won't even let that person have a fan in the church. Hallelujah. They can't even get a handkerchief. They can't even sit in a certain seat because you want the kingdom, but you don't want the God. You want the goodness, but you don't want the glory. Israel demanded for a king, but they were rejecting God. And Samuel thought they was rejecting him. Amen. All them folk who act in all kind of ways and them made you mad. And you're going to leave the place where God has established your authority. You're going to leave the place of your covering. Keep your fan. I don't have to sit nowhere. I don't have to have no title because I'm going to get the glory. Whatever it takes. Somebody say glory, Lord. Glory. The glory had departed from Israel. Every man was doing what was right in his own eye. Amen. God used weak leaders. God used weak, amen, followers. He can use the sin of the world. Anything that's on the outside should let you know I got to make my calling and election sure. Anybody realize that God is working things out in your life right now? Amen. Anybody can praise God and glory in tribulations right now? Somebody say glory. Uh-huh. The people probably thought anything would be better than Samuel's son inheriting his national leadership role. However, subsequent Hebrew history reveals that things got worse. Why did they get worse? Study Israel's history. Let's kind of roll back a little bit. All right? We're in the period of the judges. But after, before the judges was Joshua. Before Joshua was Moses. See, this problem of transition and leadership is not a new problem. 
That's how come when you see churches having trouble with transition, don't think that's no new problem. It takes somebody that want the glory in order for God to get his perfect will. And God will allow you to promote, hire, fire, amen, vote for anybody you want. Because God loves you so much that he's going to be right there. And when the mess is all down there, God will send somebody who know how to pick up the glory. Amen. Just ask your neighbor, say, do you know what the glory is? Amen. Wait for an answer now. Wait for an answer. Hallelujah. Wait for, do, do you, if you know what the glory is, let us pick up the glory. Amen. The glory is not in our vote. The glory is not in us coming together for political reasons. That's how come convocation. I'm highlighting on that theme. Amen. We don't have convention. It might be the convention committee, but it is holy convocation. And we might not be in Orlando, amen, walking around, amen, what I call the Taj Mahal, amen, but actually it's the, amen, yeah, y'all know the Rose and Shango. Y'all know walking around there, you feeling good, taking pictures. Oh, you all around the Rose. Amen. You, you so caught up. Amen. You done worked out with Jenny and the Craig when you needed Jesus and the Christ. Amen. So you can get into that, amen, body form and suit. Amen. So you can just stand up and just do little cute things like wave your hand. Hallelujah. You need to unloose that stuff and get free so you can dance under the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need to praise God like we used to. Amen. We didn't care who was looking at us. Amen. How many realize true praise is not, amen, telephonic? In other words, it's not fit for television. Somebody start crying. Now you worrying about your mascara. I wonder why you came in the temple with mascara on. Come on and say hallelujah. You worrying about your hat. You worrying about your shoe. Somebody need to ask God, Lord, send the glory. I know y'all thought I was talking about Israel. No, I'm talking about me. We're the one that need to change our behavior. I believe God allowed COVID to pull the cover off. Because he wants us to have the glory. And whenever we come back together for convocation, I pray to God we're not asking for a king, but we're looking for the glory. We're not asking for man, but we're looking for miracles. And they don't happen until we adjust our behavior. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. At this point, Samuel began detailing some of the changes. A monarchy, a monarchy. Monarchy would bring. I done got that Mona in there. Let me back up. <laughs> a king would conscribe, amen, some of the young men as servants and others as soldiers. Amen. We living with that right now. Everybody, amen, looking for a, a, a adjutant, an armor bearer. You done took that to a whole nother level. You just want somebody to be your do boy. Amen. Just walk around holding your Bible. Amen. I didn't come into church to be, amen, pimp as somebody do boy. I could have had stayed on the corner with a do rag, amen, selling drugs. Amen. I didn't come into church just to be pimped by you. I can't even be with my own family because I got to bring you coffee and tea. Got to be running down to, amen, y'all don't like me. Amen. Come on and say hallelujah. You're looking for Starbucks and I'm looking for the glory. Huh? Thank you. Then uh, he said, uh, they're going to make some of the young men servants and other soldiers. Amen. Uh, and, and stuff you don't want to do, you send me out there to get hated on. You, you, you won't say it, but you want me to straighten it out. How do you want be, people to be mad with me because of something you done put in place? Quit that. That is not God's glory. That is you trying to establish a monarchy. Yeah, Samuel explained that some would be put to work in the king's field. And other would spend time making weapons of war. Y'all hear where I'm going. Nor would the young women be spared. As some would end up working in the royal kitchen. Frying and cooking fish. Amen. Instead of you getting out there and working. Amen. You just got us laboring like. Amen. God need to open up a restaurant business in order to do his will. Come on and say hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you, y'all need to let them chickens live and let them fish, amen, or swim, and amen, quit trying to establish God's work. 
God's methodology is tithe and offering. Amen. And if you don't preach, you ain't going to get no tithing. Amen. If you don't evangelize, ain't nobody come in. Amen. Because that's God's system. That's God's methodology. Quit trying to establish, amen, a, 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 a multi-level marketing program. Amen. You call it, man just got in the church last week and you wonder about did he pay tithes or not. Amen. He just came around last year. Amen. And you worried about not that he's house is in foreclosure. Not that he's lost his, amen, job. You just kind of be concerned about, amen, that his tithing record is not faithful. You got a monarchy. And God is saying, amen, he pulled the cover off of it. Amen. He lets you stay in your living room. Hallelujah. If you don't do nothing, amen, to show people that you can preach the gospel and quit trying to demean and dog people out. Amen. You don't even know the doctrine. All you know is dogma. God is looking for somebody who can raise up and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. I know I talked about America. And I know I talked about the world, but now I'm talking to the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to repent from some of this stuff that we've done. And God has given us an opportunity for repentance. And I know I want to be the first one on the altar. Forgive me, God. Amen. For doing those things that are not right. Forgive me, God. Is there anybody realize you want the glory to come back? Is there anybody that want the glory of the Lord in this house? Lord, sing your glory. Uh-huh. The young women going to be cooking. The king would seize the land as he saw fit and demand taxes. Uh, Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, we should be further down the road than we are now. I know y'all don't like this. Amen. But God fixed it so you don't want it. Click off. Amen. You don't want to hear it. Amen. But there's somebody. Amen. That's going to hear it because this is now in cyberspace. Come on and say hallelujah. And it'll be there till Jesus come. He would even take some of the people's servants and animals and use them for his own purposes. While the people could see only the benefits, amen, of having a king rule over them, Samuel painted a bleak picture. Now let's go to our third point. Amen. I kind of got, got, got off task there. Amen. But I got two more points. Somebody say, help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. Refusal of the people. All right. Verses 18 through verse number 20. Let's read. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king which he shall have chosen and the Lord will not what? Yeah. Hear you in that day. Nevertheless the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel and they said nay but we will have a king over us. Verse 20 that we also may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. I teach this and I preach this and I live it. One way that you know that you are ineffective when the people that God has ordained to hear your voice don't want to hear you no more. Come on and say hallelujah. When the only people that you satisfy when hearing you is folk that you not commanded to lead, then something wrong with your leadership. Amen. I thank God for the refuge church in Gainesville because if don't nobody else want to hear me, I know some folk that want to hear me. I thank God for the straightway church of Christ, amen, in New Haven. Because if don't nobody want to hear me, I know somebody who want to hear me. I thank God for the Greater Refuge Memorial Church in Orlando. Y'all know where I'm going. Because if don't nobody else want to hear me, they want to hear me. I thank God for the Refuge Church Sanford, amen. If don't nobody want to hear me, they want to hear me. I thank God for the Refuge Church in Webster. Because if don't nobody want to hear me, they want to hear me. I thank God for the Florida Ecclesiastical Diocese. Because if don't nobody want to hear me, they want to hear me. What I'm saying, amen, if God has anointed you, amen, if he has chosen you, the people that he have caused to listen to your voice want to hear you. But when those people don't want to hear you, close up your tent. It's time to go home. Come on and say hallelujah. Diminished prayers. Because the aforementioned realities of a monarchy, Samson, I mean Samuel, excuse me, warned the people that a day was coming when they would realize the mistake of asking for a king. At that time, they would appeal to the Lord, but it would be futile to do so. How many realize we want it God's way? Look at somebody say, if it's not God's way, we're going to have a mess. 
As Samuel said, the Lord will not hear you in that day. Now a determined choice. In spite of the warnings, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. They were dead set on having a king. No matter what the future held, they wanted to be like the nation. Anybody that want to be like Mike, go on and hang out with Mike. I want to be like Jesus. Copying the nations around them was just going to lead them into deeper sin. For both individual Christians and churches, a desire to be like the surrounding culture is disastrous. I hear uh, Elder Lotsey Lyon saying it all the time. If it's not apostolic, it just ain't right. You can say whatever you want to say. There ain't but one way. There's only one Lord. There's one, only one faith, and there's one baptism. Amen. And if that offends you, take it up with God. Because I'd rather for you to reject me, amen, and I have God, than you to reject God and have me. Amen. Because if me and you both without God, we in a bad situation. Come on and say hallelujah. The elders of Israel assume that the yet-to-be-chosen king would be, and everybody say judge. Amen. Them apparently concluding that he would be a just ruler. Something Samuel's sons were not. The people also assumed that a king would be able to wage effective warfare against their enemies. Previously, Israel thought that they could be victorious by taking the Ark of the Covenant into battle with them. But that was a fiasco. Now they thought a king would answer was the answer to their problems. How many realize Jesus is the only answer? Samuel, Samuel went back to the Lord, who again told him to do as the people requested. God is something else. Hallelujah. It would not be long before Israel's first king was selected. In other words, amen, every man was doing what was right. What? But check this out. Because you're the people of God, even when you want to do wrong, God still got righteousness for you. How many know God will use your mess to give you a message? Come on and say hallelujah. Anybody ever got a message from God in your mess? Uh, hallelujah. You know, that, that, that uh, I like to call him the, the son prodigy or the prodig prodigy's son. He in that pigsty and that mess all around him. He got the message then. He said, I'm going to my father's house. Amen. That's why you don't try to talk or hog tie nobody to this truth. Just put it in them. Train them. If they go, the Bible say, when they all, yeah, that truth will stir you. I wish I had a witness. No. Amen. That God will let you know. Amen. Either I'm going to be Lord over all or I'm not going to be Lord at all. All right. Any questions, comments, or thoughts on today's teaching? Amen. We're going to open up the the phone line. Amen. Uh, we have three churches here in this study on today. We have the Refuge Church in Gainesville, and we are in person. Amen. We, we have the Greater Refuge Memorial Church on the uh, conference line, as well as the Straightway Church of Christ in New Haven. Amen. And we don't have to worry about the quarantine for 14 days. We could just come together. Amen. So anybody got any questions? Uh, we'll put you, unmute your phones if you have any questions or comments on the teaching today. All right. We know there's a little delay, but y'all know Bishop McCoy, I got to move on. I got 10 questions here I want to get to. If, because if you ain't had no questions, I brought mine. No questions? Thank God. All right, question number one. Amen. Praise the Lord, Bishop McCoy. Yeah, praise the Lord. Is that praise the Lord? This is missionary. Amen. This is missionary Smith. Amen. From the great state of Texas. Texas. Amen. And I thank and praise the Lord. Amen. For Florida. Amen. Thank and praise the Lord. Amen. For the people of God. Amen. I just thank God all by Himself. Amen. I thank the Lord. Amen. For giving my little text messages. Amen. From GRM that I can have Sunday school with you turn around and have worship service virtually with my church at what this is done. I bless the Lord, amen, for the lesson on today, amen, and I thank the Lord, amen, for the comment that you made, amen, about a good idea versus a God idea, and amen. if the God is going to be God, amen, of all or not at all, yeah. amen, and that's so true, we got, to, we got to turn everything over to the Lord and just live a surrendered life. Amen. And know that God is a jealous God. Yes. Amen. I just praise God. Amen. For the richness of the lesson in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so Amen. much. Amen. 
Amen. Um, Mother Swift, Smith, and please express our love and appreciation to Bishop and Mother Jenkins on behalf of Bishop and Lady McCoy, because on today we'll be all dressed up in our guard. Amen. Marching down together. Amen. So we can't be together in our clothes, but thank God for bringing us together. Just please let them know we say praise the Lord. All right. Any other questions? Amen. God bless you, sir. Amen. All right. Well, we question number one. What did Samuel do that caused concern in Israel? He appointed his sons judges. I, I hear you, Sister Wilson. Yeah, he, he decided he going to appoint his sons as judge. Now, that nepotism. Amen. The church is a family church, but your family don't run this church. Amen. Your family gets saved in this church. Somebody Amen. say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And, and, and today, amen, doing our uh, morning worship, I get the privilege of recommending for appointment the son of the founder and establishmentarian of this ministry, amen, Elder Michael Williams. And I'm letting you know, I ain't doing it because he is, amen, Bishop Frazier Williams' son. I'm doing it because he is God's man for this time. Somebody give God some praise and say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank Question you. number two. What was so bad about Samuel's sons? They did not follow God. God. But they turned away after filthy lucre money and took rise and perverted judgment. Oh, that's my mama them, y'all. <laughs> the, the reason I can appoint <laughs> Elder Williams without reservation because he'd been in evaluation. I watched the money to see whether he gonna steal it or not. I watched I watched how he deal with it. Y'all laughing, I'm telling you, I watch it. See, it doesn't matter. Hey Amen. Your name don't give you a right to take nothing that belonged to God. Amen. I watched his stewardship. Amen. I watched him work with it, get his hands dirty. Amen. Put up with some inconvenient situation. Amen. That's what I'm trying to tell you about faulty leadership. Don't blame the person if you haven't hold them accountable. Samuel's sons, amen, were doing it, but their daddy allowed it. And their daddy allowed it because Eli allowed it. And Eli allowed it because every man was doing what was right in his own sight. That's right. That's all I'm trying to drive home. Even a bad system can function with good people. I'm going to say this again. Even a bad system can function with good people. But the reverse is not true. A good system can function with bad people. Amen. It don't have to be a perfect system because any system that man make is imperfect. There is no system that man can come up with that's a perfect system. But that's how come godly people got to operate the system. How many realize we got to be in the world, but what? Not of the world. We got to take dominion in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. I would be a bad leader to appoint Elder Williams here and then run off. And then only time you all going to see me when it's time to get the tithing. That's what some of my friends do. That, that's just how they look. They're only trying to, they're like the rent man. They show up. Huh? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, Israel demands a king. Or, you know, I, McCoy going to try to bring it home. Because y'all be looking at it in the Bible like that's only them people problem. No, it's me, Lord. I got a problem. How many know the word of God is to help you live right? Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Question number three. What did the elders of Israel decide to do about Samuel's sons? He wanted a king. All right. Now, before you get to that, they gathered themselves together. Now, if something wrong, it ain't just wrong to one person. People talking about you gossiping. No, I'm trying to see why if God is in this thing. Because every word of God is going to be established what? In the mouth of two or three witnesses. 
You sitting there, you see wrongdoing, and then you don't say nothing? No, we got to have a meeting. We got to get together on this. Now, this is what the scriptures say, and this is what's going on. Any leader that's trying to stop the people from having a meeting about what his methods are, that ain't God's man. Y'all can meet anytime y'all want. Pastor, we need to have a meeting. Come on, let's sit down. Because if it's anything that's out of the way, don't you know you're to help me and I'm to help you? Come on and say thank you, Jesus. A husband and a wife, both of y'all got issues and y'all don't get together and talk them over. Something wrong. Something wrong. You got to get together. Come now and let us what? Y'all getting kind of quiet now. <laughs> Though your sins be a scarlet, they'll make you white. Church, when we don't meet, that's how come I believe God had to pull the cover off of some of this pseudo meeting. We meeting over what color the chicken going to be. We meeting over all the stuff like that. And, and y'all coming together for church function and ain't even talking together. Y'all need to meet. You, you ride in the car 45, 50 minutes to get to church. Hey, man, you stop to get gas, you stop to get coffee, and you're just looking at one another. Don't even talk. Then the first thing you come up to me, talking about praise the Lord. You ain't praise the Lord the whole time you was in the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all with me, y'all. Question number four. What two reasons did the elders give for making the request to request to Samuel? You old? He was old, and his sons did not walk in the way. And your sons are evil. You got evil children. You know that boy evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you done throwed away the rod and the staff. And you know that boy, if you, you raising him for a prison bed. You raising folk in church. Just to be a terror in the kingdom. I'm not saying they're not God's child, children. That's Absalom. I'm not saying that they're not God's children. You got all kinds of folk who create, amen, debauchery in God's house. But you're responsible for training this stuff. And you're responsible for putting systems in place that got checks and balances. I say to every woman that's under my leadership, you got some nasty men in the house of God. Explain to me. That's a part. God saved perverts. He saved, amen, all kinds of sexual deviants. That's why you better trust God. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Amen. And if a fella's in help church me. and he make an advance or he say, you know what that is. Your mama taught you when you, you know the feeling. Don't sit around talking about, hey, I ain't going to tell nobody. Tell everybody. And if he touch you, holler. Ah! Because I'm telling you, Bishop McCoy do something about it. Yeah, he will. He'll, he'll do something about it in a hurry. Every minister, I tell him, you ain't got to be found guilty. All you got to do is be accused. And we're going to deal with the accusation. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. That's how come people say, oh, you judging me. You sure enough right. You sure enough right. Because I ain't being judging by what I think. I'm going to the scripture. The scripture tells me to hold you accountable. Amen. And if you can't live the word, you sure ain't going to fool me. Is that too rough on a Sunday morning? <laughs> Amen. No, it's not. Well, right. it's supposed to be <laughs> on Sunday morning. Amen. <laughs> Even if you're dealing with lying and demons. Lying demons? Come demon. on over, Kyle Wilson. Amen. Now, is that Mother All Barker right. there? All right. That's Mother Barker, that, yeah. That's Mother Barker. Amen. Mother, Mother Barker. Amen. Thank God for Mother Christine Barker. Praying woman. Amen. Praying. Amen. And giving herself to the Lord. Thank God for leadership. Somebody say thank you, God. Uh, I'm talking about you, women who have exemplified a life of prayer before God. And that's what we need. You, you don't want to pray now. You want to preach. You don't want to pray. Remember I told you about Hannah? All right. Hannah was the one who gave us Samuel, right? What was Eli's wife's name? We don't know. What was Samuel's wife's name? We don't know. 
Now you got all these boys running rapid. I guarantee you, if they had a, a man uh, subjected themselves to the mother's teaching. Praying mama. Yeah, you, you, you know where I'm going, Sister Wilson. Uh -huh. You got a praying mama. How many know mama <laughs> teach stuff together, even though daddy done ran down the street? Quit letting that little boy get away with that foolishness. Mm -hmm. Talking about, well, you know his daddy ain't here. I don't care if the pastor is old and allowing him to do it. Mother, you can still keep your house in order. Yeah. You can pray until yeah. God will straighten out that church. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, you got some weak leadership, yeah. amen, at the head, but you got a strong mother's boy, and you can't get past nothing. Mama, mother, t take her finger and say, come here, baby. And you might can't get a word from the pastor, but I'll tell you, mother, I'll tell you. <laughs> Amen. Amen? All right. I'm going to stop right there because I done gone past my time. Amen. All I want you to know is Israel demands a king. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless us today that we may apply the principles that we've learned on today. Lord, enable us not to look on the outside but to look on the inside. Bless the Refuge Church here in Gainesville. God bless, amen, the Straightway Church of Christ. Amen, bless the Greater Refuge Memorial Church. Lord, those that have given themselves to you, enable us to be a better blessing in this season. And we shall give you perpetual praise, glory, and honor. All who love the Lord say in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus name. We're going to be back online at 12 amen. noon, amen, for the preaching portion of our lesson. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, everyone.